Merry Christmas and welcome to the 11 o'clock Mass celebrating the Nativity of the Lord. Our entrance hymn is O Come All Ye Faithful. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and still more wonderfully restored it, grant, we pray, that we may share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings glad tidings, announcing peace, bearing good news, announcing salvation, and saying to Zion, your God is king. Hark, your sentinels raise a cry. Together they shout for joy, for they see directly before their eyes 
the Lord restoring Zion. Break out together in song, O ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord comforts his people. He redeems Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm in the sight of all the nations. All the ends of the earth will behold the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, in times past, God spoke impartial in various ways to our ancestors through the prophets. In these last days, he has spoken to us through the Son, whom he made heir of all things, and through whom he created the universe, who is the refulgence of his glory, the very imprint of his being, who sustains all things by his mighty word. When he had accomplished purification from sins, he took his seat at the right hand of the majesty on high, as far superior to the angels, as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, this day I have begotten you? Or again, I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. And again, when he leads the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh. 
Christ dawned upon us. Come, you nations, and adore the Lord. For today a great light has come upon the reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through him, and without him nothing came to be. What came to be through him was life, and this life was the light of the human race. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him, but the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But to those who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not by natural generation, nor by human choice, nor by a man's decision, but of God. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we saw his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, The one who is coming after me ranks ahead of me because he existed before me. From his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace, because while the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. The only Son, God, who is at the Father's side, has revealed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, we gather on this beautiful Christmas morning, full of rain and wind, appropriate for 2020, knowing all too well the darkness that we've experienced lately, the, not only the grim weather, thank God it's not snow, but also 2020 itself, it just seems like so many things have gone wrong. Just look to your masks for proof. And so no one needs me to point out the darkness of not just this year, but of, of life. Life can be very difficult. Life can be very challenging. Life can be very unfair. And yet, you and I, as Christians, on this Christmas Day, have decided to brave that darkness, to brave that cold, come here to celebrate this beautiful feast, this feast of hope, there are so many good and great things associated with Christmas, right? Many of which we can't celebrate this year. But one of which is the theme of light. I mentioned at the Midnight Mass, I would have liked to have called Christmas the, the, the Festival of Lights. Our Jewish brothers and sisters got to that one first. But it's a beautiful image, the Festival of Lights. What do we do? We decorate our homes with lights for no real reason, right? You're inside. <laughs> you can't see them. We decorate our lights, we decorate our homes with these lights. We put candles in the windows, very ancient tradition, by the way, signifying many things in the Irish tradition. The candle in the window at Christmas told the Holy Family that there's room here for you. It also, in the penal times, told traveling priests that they would be welcomed here and they'd be safe. 
and tradition states that it, that candle can only be blown out by a virgin named Mary. That's why there's so many Irish women named Mary. I don't know if that's true, but I choose to believe it is. Don't tell me if I'm wrong. I like that idea. But lights matter to us. Now think if you've ever been lost, maybe as a kid, maybe more recently, camping, say, and you're alone and it's dark. This is not where you want to be. And then you see a light and you realize so many things because of that, don't you? Safety, home, I'm not alone. Friends, Christmas is precisely that for us. Yes, we can get caught up in the, the trappings and the, and the fun of other things and the cuteness of the fat baby in the crib and Santa and getting together with family and friends and gifts. All good things. I'm not against any of those things. But in its bones, at its root, what this feast tells us is that despite any darkness, we are never abandoned. We are never alone. Christ shines through the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it, and never will. That's what Christmas is about. He is the light in the darkness, the darkness of this world, and more importantly, the darkness sometimes we can find in our own hearts. I think that's why this feast speaks so powerfully, not just to Christians, but to people on the fringe of Christianity, non-believers in Christianity. Because what it calls for from the human heart is so powerful and so beautiful. A little self-forgetting and a little, not just mere financial generosity, but kindness of heart, warmth of friendship, the extended hand looking to help. Powerful themes and themes that cry out from every human heart that we want for ourselves and also know we're called to give of ourselves. And this whole season reminds us of that. Once when I was a kid, I think I was home alone maybe for one of the first times my parents were traveling for the weekend and I was going to be in bed by the time they got home, and I remembered to leave the porch light on for them. A small gesture. The only reason I remember it is because my mother thanked me for it. She said she knew she was home when the light, she saw that the light was on. It gave me pause. I've always remembered that, and it's made me kind of sensitive to the importance of lights in darkness. And of course, this beautiful Gospel of John that's one of the great themes of John, light and darkness. Because darkness can be so oppressive, so difficult. Then we see the light. We see one candle, say. We see one searchlight in the woods, one lit window in the distance, and we know so many things. There's a painter that I'm familiar with, uh, Thomas Kincaid, I don't think expert art critics think much of his work, but he paints in such a way, he paints landscapes and, 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 and homes and beautiful little rivers, but he, he does something to his paints. He adds something so that his whites and his yellows leap out. They're very warm, they're very inviting. And when you look at one of his paintings, you can't help but want to knock on that door, <laughs> be on the other side of that window. He has an uncanny ability to, every structure he, he paints feels like your home, feels like it's telling your story. In many ways, they're beautiful images, not just of cottages and, and homes, but of, of heaven. Because you see, he's painting what Christmas is. That the light of Christ scatters the darkness and he brings it to us to lead us to our only true home, beside him.
Friends, let us stand and proudly profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident that God hears the prayers of his people, we turn to him now with our needs and intentions. For the priests who make it possible for us to celebrate our Catholic faith, we also remember in a special way a priest of the Archdiocese of Boston who have gone home to the Lord this past year. May our good and loving God grant them eternal resting place in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who live in poverty, may our Savior and King born in a stable, raise them up through the faith to share in the riches of the kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our faith community who mourn or suffer loneliness, may they find you the joy of Christmas through the generosity extended by others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the light of Christ, may they rest in eternal peace, especially all those who have been lost to COVID, Member of, uh, members of our Mass Intention Guild and all the beloved deceased, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those needs best spoken in the silence of our hearts, for those needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we turn to you with these, our prayers. We unite them to the prayers of the blessed and ever-glorious Virgin Mary and speak them in the name of her Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Make acceptable, O Lord, our oblation on this solemn day when you manifested the reconciliation that makes us wholly pleasing in your sight and inaugurated for us the fullness of divine worship through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in the mystery of the word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to God, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and our Sean, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, celebrating the most sacred day on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God, the glory of yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world have grant us peace Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am worthy that you should enter the kingdom of God.
child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is leaving whom angels greet with anthems sweet eat while shepherds watch our keeping this this is Christ the King whom shepherds guard and angels sing days days to bring him forth the babe the song Such mean a stay where ox and ass are feeding. Good Christians fear for sinners here. The silent word is pleading. This, this is Christ the King. Shepherds, God and angels sing. Days, days to bring him on the babe, the son of man. So bring him incense, gold and birth, compassing king to King of kings, salvation brings. Let loving hearts enthrone him. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that just as the Savior of the world born this day is the author of divine generation for us, so he may be the giver even of immortality who lives and reigns forever and ever. 
just a brief word of uh, uh, hope that you have uh, a great and happy and holy Merry Christmas from Father Hines and all the staff and volunteers. If you're traveling, do so safely. Uh, treasure as many uh, traditions as you can and maybe start some new ones, right? Maybe uh, being together as a nuclear family for Christmas isn't the worst thing in the world. God forbid we talk to each other, right? <laughs> Just kidding. Also, as you're leaving at the doors, please find a copy of uh, the Matthew Kelly book. There's a kind of a tradition here. We like to give something away on Christmas as a gift to you and your family. Feel free to take more than one. Please don't take a million, but take more than one if you, have, uh, if you want it and you have an idea that someone else would like it too. Please feel free. I'd rather we run out than these don't find a good home. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. of his love and wonders of his love and wonders more.